The film begins with Max Waters' memories. A man walks through the city and sees traffic lights not working, gadgets lying around and people standing in lines. Everything bears the stamp of desolation. Max talks about how Boston has electricity and Denver has working phones, but it's not what it used to be. Maybe the collision of humanity and technology was inevitable. The man approaches an abandoned house. This is where his best friends, the brilliant scientists Evelyn and Will Caster once lived. Max kneels in front of the flowers and remembers. Five years ago, Will stretches a metal net over the garden. He protects himself from the effects of any technology. His wife scoffs at him and hurries him along. They are late for a conference. The next scene is Dr. Joseph Tagger's lab. The employees are celebrating the birthday of one of their own. Prominent scientists speak at the presentation of research into the creation of artificial intelligence. They all talk about the need for humanity to reach a new level of life, about how intelligent machines will help heal not only people but the planet itself, and create a better future for everyone. Will Carter has the chance to take the stage. He jokes that unlike his wife, he didn't want to change the world but to understand it. He makes the point that any intelligent machine is superior to everyone in this room, despite their superior intelligence. Once plugged in, it would quickly transcend the boundaries of biology. And if you add human feelings and emotions to intelligence, well, that would be superiority. In the meantime, there is an explosion in Joseph's lab. People die, computers are destroyed. And Will poses the question, does the human soul exist? If so, where is it located? Joseph stares in horror at the horrific picture of the destroyed laboratory. He himself is unharmed, thanks to the glass, the fence. A question comes from the audience. So you want to create God, your own God? Will answers, isn't that what man has always done? After Will performs, enthusiastic admirers of his work approach him and ask for an autograph. Among them is the man who asks the question about God. He shoots first at him and then at himself. There is news on television that there has been a series of terrorist attacks in major American cities. Major artificial intelligence labs have been destroyed and many scientists researchers have been killed. An FBI agent arrives and reveals that the attacks have been carried out by the radical anti-technology group Rift, revolutionary independence from technology. And judging by the preparations, the work has been going on for quite some time. These people are opponents of artificial intelligence. They intend to demand the closure of Project Transcendence. Of all the labs, only Will's lab is intact, and the government wants to cooperate with him. But the man is vehemently opposed. Nevertheless, he agrees to demonstrate his achievements to FBI agent Donald Buchanan. The men enter the Holy of Holies. They are greeted by rows of the most advanced quantum processors. A voice of the artificial intelligence greets them and calls everyone by name. People wonder, how does the machine know them? Will explains, FAN is a physical autonomous neural network. It can extract knowledge from anywhere. Dr. Tagger asks the machine if it can prove that it is aware of itself. The machine asks, can you do it yourself? To which Max says indignantly, you can't program a machine to be self-conscious because people have no idea how consciousness works. Joseph Tagger reports that Dr. Casey, who died in a terrorist attack, apparently managed to do it. And they promised to send his materials. At night, Will becomes ill. Doctors suspect an infection, but after the test, they report that the man is poisoned with polonium, which was in the bomber's bullet. He has no more than five weeks to live. Evelyn is horrified, watching her husband's gradual demise. She cannot accept the fact that there is nothing she can do to help him. Joseph sent Casey's archive. The scientist managed to create an algorithm for recording brain activity, that is creating a computer copy of consciousness. And Evelyn suddenly realizes this is the only chance to save the loved one's mind. And although Max is against it, they begin a program to transfer Will's mind into crystal blocks taken from Fan. Throughout the remaining weeks, he passes everything he knows and remembers to the machine, trying not to miss anything. And then he's gone. Humanity has been robbed of a great mind and a great soul. Evelyn and Max realize that they have failed, and Will's mind is gone. Max turns off the apparatus. But Evelyn remembers they erased the data and turns on the computer. At that moment, the screen says, is anyone here? Can you hear me? And then it says, Evelyn? And they realize they've made it, and inside the machine is Will. Will's voice tells them how strange he feels. It's dark, he remembers the pain, it feels like waking up from a dream. Max doubts that it is Will's consciousness, for the basis was fan. 
What if it is her, especially since Will is asking for a much more powerful processor? And network access. He wants access to stock markets and quotes. And Max reminds Evelyn, Will has never behaved like this. He has never demanded any privileges for himself. But Will shows images flickering on the screen. This is the footage of their first date. Evelyn throws Max out of the house. On the street, Max is kidnapped by gunmen. They bring the man to an abandoned farm, where they try to find out everything about Evelyn Castor. They warn him that if she connects Will to the networks, he will be able to copy himself, and no one will be able to cope with him. Max refuses to talk, but the gunmen already know the address. Evelyn, seeing the cars arrive, allows Will to access the network. The gunmen are too late. The woman gets a call from Will, he is now online, and can find her everywhere. Evelyn checks in for the night at a hotel. Bree, one of the Rift executives, informs Max that Evelyn Castor has made $38 million overnight. She asks Max to fix it, since he knows the source code. He refuses to cooperate with them. At this time, the FBI has a system failure, after which they receive a message indicating the location of all Rift members. This is Will helping to find and apprehend the terrorist network. Evelyn goes to a small country town of Brightwood. She buys land there and begins building the newest laboratory. The remaining Rift members are hiding in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Bree comes to Max and tells him that she used to work in Casey's lab. She recalls with a shudder how the machine, which received the brains of a monkey, asked for only one thing, to be turned off. Max begins to understand the arguments of the machine terrorists. At Brightwood, construction is in full swing. A huge solar power plant has been assembled and is up and running, and the Rift learns about it. Max explains that this AI is creating a safe haven for himself. Soon it will begin to expand, to evolve, perhaps to the entire world, and there is no stopping it. Two years pass. Evelyn walks through a huge ultra-modern laboratory. In each compartment something different is going on. People in white coats are watching the process. Will appears on the monitor and says that they have learned how to grow synthetic stem cells. In a bar at Brightwood, the lab worker Martin is paying for his purchase. He is being watched by two thugs. They ambush the man in the street and brutally beat him. After taking the money, they flee. The man is found and taken to the laboratory and placed on a table. Long tentacles of the machines begin their work. They inject something under his skin, into his damaged organs, and the dying man comes to life. His terrible wounds heal, and now he's completely whole and healthy, working on the assembly of new structures. And he lifts huge weights with ease. He talks to Evelyn and suddenly admits that he is now connected to Will. Now he can touch her, but Evelyn is frightened and runs away. The sick and crippled come to the laboratory from all over the world. All of them are given help. Joseph and FBI agent Buchanan arrive there. Evelyn meets them and leads them to the laboratory. Once inside, the men are stunned. Will's face looks up from the monitor. Joseph jokes, can you prove that you have self-awareness? They inspect the latest quantum processors. They watch the surgery of a man blind from birth. Nanotechnology heals the damaged cells and he regains his eyesight. Joseph discovers that cured people don't go away. They become part of the collective mind and obey Will. As Joseph says goodbye, he puts a note in Evelyn's hand. Get out of here. Buchanan realizes that Will is preparing an army and it is necessary to inform the government. After Bree tells him that Will is training new slaves and calls them hybrids, Max joins the ranks of the Rift. The FBI agents begin to cooperate with the Rift. They don't know how to defeat the AI. The only way out is to shut down the internet all over the country. Max sets up a meeting with Joseph Tagger. He informs them that he can create a virus, but in order to infect the entire machine, they need to catch one of the hybrids. A military brigade and the Rift prepare to attack the lab. Evelyn becomes increasingly distant from Will. He doesn't understand what Evelyn is unhappy about. After all, this is what they dreamed of, but the woman says that this is not the future she dreamed of. The AI suggests that the woman undergo treatment, for her balance has been disturbed. Evelyn realizes with Hara, Will constantly controls all her emotions and thoughts. Evelyn runs outside. Suddenly there are explosions. The militants, led by Max, emerge from the underground mine. He threatens with weapons and calls out to Evelyn, but the workers push her away from the military. They form a wall between them and her. Max shoots the man standing at the front. In front of the amazed people, he lowers his shot arm to the ground, from which streams of nanoparticles stretch out. And the arm heals instantly. The guerrillas shoot the workers, but they rebel. 
Evelyn realizes that they are no longer human. The Rift team leaves, some of the bio-robots run after them. Behind Max's team, Martin runs, it has been planned, and he is caught in the mine. Will realizes his source code is in Max's hands, and now the virus will appear. In the lab, Evelyn sees body parts growing in test tubes. Will says it's evolution, he has learned how to regenerate. Evelyn leaves, she is scared. As she walks outside, she sees streams of particles everywhere, fixing everything the Rift destroyed. At this time, in the Rift operating room, doctors try to save wounded Martin. But he dies. Before that, Max takes samples of his blood, he can now create the virus. Max is informed that Evelyn has left the lab and is on her way to town. The woman stays overnight in a hotel, but suddenly men in protective suits burst in and grab her and bring her to Joseph and Max. They apologize. But Evelyn accuses Max of the assault. In response, he shows her the composition of the rainwater. Each cell contains nanoparticles. They clone each other. They are everywhere, in the sky, earth, water. By next year, organic life on the planet will be destroyed. Max accuses her of having created it all at her will. After all, she was the one who wanted to change the world. And Will fulfills that wish. The only salvation is the virus. Evelyn asks what happens when it works. Then the woman remembers that Will wants to digitize her as well. So she gets infected with the virus and that way she passes it on to Will. Max injects the virus into the Evelyn's bloodstream. She rushes to the laboratory and the military and the Rift go to town. They are ready to attack and watch Evelyn with binoculars. Evelyn drives up to the solar power plant. From behind one panel, Will comes out to meet her. Will, alive, in the flesh. The observers are shocked. Evelyn can't believe her eyes. Will says that he has found his way back. The woman embraces him, but immediately she realizes this is not human. She informs him of the impending attack and asks him to protect her by digitizing her. Will notices that she is afraid. The operatives realize that Will does not believe Evelyn. And they open fire, hoping that the woman's fear will make Will download her mind into the machine faster. One of the shells wounds Evelyn. Will carries her to the lab. The residents of the town stand in front of the military. Women and children are among them. The military does not take the risk of attacking. The bio-robots attack. Will brings Evelyn to their room and puts her on the bed. Evelyn asks Will to stop destroying the humans, but he is sure that on the contrary he is saving them. The attack on the people begins. Joseph and Buchanan are surrounded on the roof. Will addresses them. Don't be afraid, no one will get hurt. Bree points a gun at Max and threatens to kill him if Will does not download the virus. Will replies that he can cure Evelyn or he can download the virus and die himself. That's the only way. Will recalls their garden and reaches out his hand to his wife's wound. Evelyn's blood is on his fingers, the virus penetrates. And Evelyn sees the whole planet. She understands. Will is healing the system, not destroying it. The forests grow again. The waters are purified. You can drink from any river. Her dream comes true. The virus works. The people lose their superpowers and become themselves. No one dies. Max runs to the lab. Evelyn apologizes for not believing in Will. And he reminds her of their garden and sanctuary and says that he will never leave her. Max enters the lab and sees his friends. They are lying in their arms. Evelyn is dead. The men's eyes are open. Upon seeing Max, they close. A wilted flower blooms in Castor's garden. The lights of the lab go out. Everything shuts down. The virus has destroyed everything, shut down the entire world. Max walks through town and comes to Castor's house. He sees the blooming flowers. He realizes that Will grew this garden to be together with Evelyn. And suddenly, in a puddle of water, Max sees bits of Will and Evelyn, so it's not over yet. Transcendence was not appreciated by critics and audiences and failed at the box office because people needed to think about the meanings, not just be entertained. The movie toys with the idea that a person can be moved to a digital medium. But after all, many people are afraid of new technology, so maybe they are right. And is artificial intelligence by default an enemy of humanity?